what are you kids doing? We are playing Smash Bros. And do you like Smash Bros? Yes, I do. Alright, Professor Peter. What do you need? Well, I was just wondering why you're inside playing this garbage when you could be outside learning about... What... what, what is that? Well, I'm talking about gaseous exchange in plants, of course. Alright, I'm here. What's this gas thing you were talking about? Well, vascular plants exchange gases with the environment. They have to do this in order to carry out photosynthesis. Uh, I remember reading somewhere about these things called guard cells. I've heard about them, but I'm not exactly sure what they do. Guard cells simply regulate transpiration, which is the loss of water vapor from leaves and other parts of the plant. Uh, Alright, I think I get it a little bit, but then how, is, how exactly is gas exchanged between the plants and the environment? Stomata are the spaces between guard cells. They are what allow for the gaseous exchange to occur. During the day they're open, and then at night they close. They open and close to regulate the amount of gas that's exchanged. Okay, I think I get it. So basically it's like uh, some sort of sponge, right? No, no, it's not like that at all, actually. It's more like a door opening and closing. An open door will let things in, and a closed door will keep things out. Okay, I think I get it. I think I get it. Good. Get out of the chair, Jer. Oh. My turn to work. <laughs> Just hey, 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 cut the small talk, Gramps. So what do you want to learn about plants? I want to learn about the inner workings of stomata movements. Oh, stomata movements. The opening and closing of the stomata are caused by osmosis, or the diffusion of water. When the surrounding guard cells are full of water, the, st the stomata open, and when the guard cells have less water, the stomata close. It, it, it's broke. There's no water. I there's no water. I I'm, I'm thirsty. There's no water. Abscisic acid binds to guard cells and makes the stomata close. So the guard cells widen? Exactly. A carbon dioxide concentration increase can, can close the stomata as well. How come everything got to close the stomata? Well, when the situations are reversed, the stomata open. Remember, this is all important for gaseous exchange. Temperature can also cause the stomata to close if it becomes over 30 degrees Celsius. So with an increase in temperature, there'll be more water stress? That is a nicely justified assumption. In other words, it's 100% correct. Light can also be a factor for the movement of stomata. When the guard cells detect light, they will open. When I see light in the morning, I wake up! Precisely. That also relates to the final factor, the plant's internal clock. Just as you get hungry at certain intervals of the day, so does the stomata open and close periodically. Alright, old man. I know how stomata moves. Now let's see how you dig these moves.
pretty good, kid. But what do you know about potassium? Me no no. Let's see here. The, the amount of potassium concentration can also cause the stomata to open and close. Usually, the cell would have a positive charge from the potassium, but it's offset by the uptake of chlorine. That doesn't really make sense. Yeah, I know. Potassium affects the movement of stomata. That's all you really need to know. Peter, you wanna play ping pong today? Well, sure, but only if you want to talk about plants while doing it. Hey, yeah. During the dry season, plants shed their leaves so that they have less surface area that they have to distribute their water to. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, no. But that's what's happening, though. And then during the rainy seasons, the plants store their water so that they'll have more water left when they need it during the dry seasons. I'm done. I'm hungry, dude. Gotta go eat. But don't let me tie. We're playing this time. All this food is making me think. How do plants transfer the nutrients they take into other parts of the plant? Wow, that's a good question. The movement of sugars in the phloem is in the form of a source to sink pattern. Wait, what source is that? The source is from where sugar is made or stored inside the plant. The sink is the area where the sugar is needed. What about the pressure flow hypothesis? According to the pressure flow hypothesis, solutes, solutes move in solutions due to differences in water potential. Mm. Potential. Mm. Cool. Where is, the wa where is the sugar produced? Doesn't it come from Meyer? Kinda, well, kinda like that. Only, only not like that. It's produced in the mesophyll of leaves. Oh. Uh, wait. How how is sugar transported to the sink? That's a good question. Let me look in. Let me look in a conveniently placed scientific book. Um, okay. Okay, here we go. I found it. Um, the increase of sugar concentration in the phloem creates a hypertonic environment, which then creates an osmotic gradient. This uptake of water generates a positive pressure that forces the sap to flow along the sieve tube. Oh my god, it's 8 o'clock! We gotta watch American Idol! Dumbo, ice cream, a joshi, hoshi, kunyol boshanayo, hong, bang, 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 Ibabo <laughs> <laughs>